The empirical formula tells you the relative number of atoms in a compound. The molecular formula, however, tells you the actual number of atoms in a compound. So the empirical formula and the molecular formula are related. The molecular formula can be the same as the empirical formula or a multiple of the empirical formula. Let me give you an example. Hexane has as its empirical formula C3H7. The molecular formula, however, is twice that. It is C6H14. So the empirical formula is multiplied by 2. Another example is dinitrogen tetroxide. The empirical formula is NO2. The molecular formula, the actual molecular formula, is twice the empirical formula. It is 2 times NO2, which is N2O4. This multiplier, in this case 2, can be any number, any integer number. How do you find that number? Well, that number must come from extra pieces of information. Information like concentration or density experimental information on top of what you already know. Let's look at this example. This structure has the empirical formula CH, but it's also given that 6.5 grams of this compound contains 0.25 moles. So these two pieces of information is enough for me to determine the molecular formula. How does it work? Works as follows. The molar mass is determined by the total number of grams divided by the number of moles that I have, and that is 26. So this compound has a molar mass of 26 grams per mole. The empirical formula, however, if you would calculate the molar mass of that, you would find 12 plus 1 equals 13 grams per mole. So the empirical mass is not the same as the actual molar mass of the compound. I need to multiply the empirical mass by 2, which means I need to multiply the empirical formula by 2 as well. And that means that the molecular formula is C2H2. I multiply the empirical formula CH by 2. So the molecular formula, once again, is C2H2. Another example. This is maleic acid. And we're going to determine the molecular formula of maleic acid. It is given that maleic acid contains 41.39% of carbon and 3.47% of hydrogen, and the rest is oxygen. It is also given that 15 grams of maleic acid contains 0.129 moles of the compound. Using this information, I can determine the molecular formula. What I do is, once again, I assume I have 100 grams of this compound. And if I have 100 grams, I know that 41% of that is carbon. That means that 41.39 grams is carbon, that carbon contributes to 100 grams. Hydrogen is 3.47%, which means I have 3.47 grams of hydrogen in 100 gram of the compound. The rest is oxygen. So oxygen is 100 minus 41 minus 3.4 equals 55.14 grams. So now I have the number of grams of each of the elements in this compound if I have 100 grams in total. Next, I'm going to convert these amount in grams into moles for each element. Let's start with carbon. I had a total of 41.39 grams of carbon. If I divide it by the molar mass of carbon, I find the total number of moles, and that is 3.44 moles of carbon. I can do the same for hydrogen. I found 3.47 grams of hydrogen divided by the molar mass and you find 3.44 moles of hydrogen. For oxygen I found 55.14 grams. Divide that by the molar mass of oxygen and you find 3.446 moles of oxygen. So what I find here, 3.44 moles of each of the elements, which means that the ratio between them is 1 to 1 to 1, and thus the empirical formula is CHO. Now, the mass, the molar mass of the empirical formula is, adding up all these molar masses of the, of the elements, which is 29.02 grams per mole. So, if the molecular formula would be the empirical formula, the molar mass of the compound would be 
29.02 grams per mole. So let's see what the actual molar mass is. Can I calculate that? Yes, you can. You can get that from the extra information in this question. It says that 15 grams contains 0.129 moles. So 15 divided by the number of moles gives me the molar mass, which is 116 grams per mole. You can see that the empirical molar mass and the actual molar mass are not the same. The ratio between the two is the ratio between those two numbers, 116 divided by 29, which is almost 4. So, 4 times more mass in the molar mass than in the empirical mass, which means I need to multiply my empirical formula by the factor of 4. That means that the molecular formula is C4, H4, O4. I've multiplied my empirical formula by number 4. Now remember that this number coming from this division must be an integer, so you have to round to the next nearest integer in this calculation. So what we did here effectively is the following. We found the empirical formula and calculated the mass, the molar mass of the empirical formula. And then we looked at the ratio between the, mol the actual molar mass and the calculated molar mass of the empirical formula. That ratio, that number, should be an integer. And that in integer is the subscript that goes into the molecular formula for each of the elements. That's the multiplier for the uh, empirical formula. Now, there's a quicker way to do this. And that is, instead of assuming that I have 100 grams, I assume I have one mole of the compound. If I have one mole, in this case, I have 116 grams, because 116 is the molar mass of the compound. So I'm going to determine how many moles of carbon there are in 116 grams of the compound. That means one mole of the compound. So let's start with carbon. I know there is 41% of carbon. I know one mole weighs 116. So 41% of 116 equals a total of 48 grams. So there's 48 grams of carbon in one mole of the compound. But how many moles is that? Well, you take 48, divide that by the molar mass of carbon. And that is a total of four. So there are four moles of carbon, four moles of the element carbon, in one mole of the compound. I converted here percentage to grams to moles. And I can do the same thing for hydrogen. I find 3.47% of hydrogen. I can convert that to grams, multiplying that by 116 grams, and then divide that by the molar mass to find 4 moles of hydrogen. And lastly, the same for oxygen. A total of 55.14%. I can convert percent to grams by multiplying by 116, and then grams to moles by dividing by the molar mass of oxygen. I find 4 moles of oxygen. So I find 4 moles of hydrogen, 4 moles of carbon, and 4 moles of oxygen for each 1 mole of the compound. And that means that the molecular formula is C4H4O4. So this method, kind of a somewhat quicker method, went as follows. I assumed 1 mole of the compound, and I determined the amount of grams in 1 mole of the compound for each of the elements. Then I converted these amount of grams into moles. And then the number of moles of each is the subscript in the molecular formula for each of the elements. This method is generally a little quicker, but we should be able to use both methods to determine the molecular formula.